Welcome to the program. My name is Alexander Kerry. Our Eurovision is undoubtedly the most exciting European musical contest of the year. Hundreds of millions of viewers are expected to tune in as 43 countries compete for the ultimate song contest prize. And after the victory of Ukrainian and Crimean Tatar singer, singer Jamala last year, it is now Kiev's turn to host Eurovision. In the beginning of May, presenting such an event is a huge and perhaps daunting responsibility. Right now, we have the great honor to be joined by one of the hosts of this year's song contest. Joining me to talk all things Eurovision is Timur Miroshnichenko, TV, TV presenter and host for this year's competition. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the welcome. Thank you. Uh, first, the, the Eurovision slogan this year is celebrate diversity. Yeah. But it's the first time the contest is hosted by three men, and the second time, well, of course, you were waiting for this question, the second time there is no women in the hosting team. Isn't it a little bit contradictory? No, you know, um, uh, firstly, it wasn't a goal of the show producers uh, to form uh, such a uh, um, host uh, team, um, but uh, during all the selection uh, process, uh, the procedure, during uh, the shooting videos, uh, talking to show producer uh, in interviews, different uh, uh, curious situations uh, which uh, he prepared for us, uh, he decided uh, that uh, this uh, this time maybe it will be interesting, uh, interesting for the viewers, uh, for the contest uh, at all, uh, to form uh, the host team of uh, three guys. Yes, it will. It will be for the first time in the Eurovision history. But uh, you know that uh, during the 61-year uh, history of Eurovision, there was a uh, uh, different uh, types of hosting. There, the, the most, uh, uh, the most uh, ordinary, traditional, uh, traditional, traditional couple of uh, guy uh, of men and women, and uh, we know that. Uh, as I remember, in 2013, there was Pietra Meda who hosted uh, the whole event uh, mm -hmm. for, for just for herself. Which is impressive. Uh, impressive. Yes, it was. <laughs> I think it was very interesting, but hard for for her. But she uh, did it well. Uh, and uh, maybe in 2014, uh, there was uh, three hosts, uh, two girls and one man. So uh, this time for three guys, why not? So it's, 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 <laughs> it's a diverse <laughs> already. <laughs> uh, so you're going to be a, a green room host. Yeah. So for the viewers who don't know exactly what this role is, what is it? What is it? Green Room, yeah, the, it's uh, the area uh, where all the participants are uh, waiting for their performance on the stage and uh, uh, just after the performance, uh, again and again, they uh, go to this Green Room. It's situated in front of uh, the stage, so it's mm -hmm. a part of the, all the whole of the arena. And uh, I think it's uh, the heart of the contest, because uh, all the contestants, all the countries uh, will be there uh, watching uh, what's going on on the stage, waiting for the results, uh, for the voting ceremony and so on. So all the emotions will be uh, in that place. And um, I'm going to show them to, uh, to the whole... Emotion. Uh, to, the... to the whole world, to, 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 uh, to um, 200 uh, millions of viewers <laughs> all around the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how about last last year edition? Yeah. Uh, did you know immediately when Jamala won? Uh, or did it come as a surprise, for example? Yes, it was a surprise because. Um, uh, we expected uh, something extraordinary about her performance on, on stage, but uh, uh, really mm, we, we didn't think about uh, she's gonna win. Uh, we th uh, thought that she will be on the top three, for example, top five. And uh, during the uh, voting uh, procedure, voting ceremony, uh, I was a commentator as usual for Ukraine. Uh, I've, I've been there in the commentary booth uh, um, just uh, uh, um, and just in front of mm. the stage, but uh, approximately at 10, uh, 10 level of, uh, uh, it was uh, far from the stage. And uh, you know, in a couple of minutes before the, uh, the announcement, announcement um, some people come, uh, came to, to my booth and said, uh, be ready, you have to go on stage just after uh, the announcement. Uh, what for? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we saw the result, Ukraine, won the Eurovision Sun Contest uh, thanks uh, to Jamala and uh, that time while I was walking from my booth to the stage uh, to do the first interview uh, it sounded like a uh, prize, one more prize from EBU, uh, 15 minutes interview on stage with the winner. Um, and uh, while I was uh, w walking from the booth to the stage um, I thought, really? 
Is it's this, this, this it's happening? Came to reality. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm sleeping right now. I don't know what's going on. And maybe just uh, in a couple of hours, uh, I really um, understood that uh, we did it. <laughs> it was an amazing time. And uh, I think it was uh, the best emotions uh, in my life for this time. Coming back on this event, some, some people thought that Jamala's entry last year was political. More people today are trying to politicize this event. So what, what do you say to these people as a host and, and how do you keep this event about music and togetherness? You know, the Eurovision Sun Contest for definitely is uh, all about uh, music, about love, peace, <laughs> uh, about unity. And um, maybe it's up to us, to, to, for the journalists who are trying to politicize uh, this contest and uh, everything which surrounding this contest. It's not uh, maybe the best way to uh, show um, show, I don't know, music, uh, to sh that music really ha has to be uh, beside uh, the politics mm. and all the things. So uh, the commitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it, maybe it's not uh, the right um, position for, for these people, because really, uh, let's uh, we have to forget about anything for these uh, three and a half uh, hours during the show and just uh, to, I don't know, just uh, have fun, uh, have a great time with uh, friends, uh, with somebody else uh, uh, with whom you're watching this show. So it's, uh, it's not uh, the good way to, mm. to show this contest. Let's forget about it. Just music, just peace, just love and unity. Well, I just have another harsh question here. Uh, talking about the event in itself, like uh, according to the news, things are not going as smoothly as they should have been this year. So 21 members of the organization team resigned and blaming the lack of transparency in this year's contest. So can you tell us more about it? Um, yes, it was an, not a very good situation, but uh, uh, these people decided to resign from uh, the committee and um, we have just to, to say thank, uh, thank them uh, for their job uh, that uh, they did before uh, the resigning. And, uh, but we have to go on. Um, the European Broadcasting Union um, said that, uh, okay, we just have to replace them to find new people and go on. We have l less time <laughs> before the start, so n n uh, there is no time uh, to, to think and to, to think. Uh, yes, let's go on. But uh, once understand. again, we have just uh, say thank, uh, uh, thanks uh, for these people who, for I don't know, three, three or five months, uh, uh, did their job. You've been hosting the Junior Eurovision Song Contest in 2005 for its first edition in Ukraine. Um, so what are the main differences and the similarities between the two contests, the Eurovision and the ju Junior Eurovision? Uh, junior Eurovision is smaller, for mm -hmm. sure, because uh, here we have uh, 43 countries uh, competing in the uh, ESC and we have uh, uh, 14 or 16 countries uh, which are competing in uh, the Junior Eurovision. So Junior are just uh, smaller because it's Junior Eurovision. No. <laughs> and that, uh, this is uh, the only one difference between uh, them. That's it. Um, how, how do you see this year's edition? And what about, for example, the, the Otorvald nomination for Ukraine? And why choosing a, a rock and roll band this this? It's up to the viewers. <laughs> they decided that. <laughs> Why not? You know, um, all the Europe uh, uh, saw our beautiful uh, female singers with uh, with the great voices, uh, with the great songs uh, during the uh, last years. So this time, uh, I think, uh, why not? Uh, we may show Europe uh, that we have uh, boys bands, uh, rock bands, and so on. It's uh, once again about diversity. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just our newsroom uh, took the liberty of Googling your name, and we picked up three photos uh -huh. for you to comment. So they will appear behind you. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one, so how did you end up in this situation? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was uh, uh, this uh, photo uh, I th from 2010, Eurovision in Oslo. Okay. <laughs> I, we, we've just, um, it's uh, the area where the Euro village uh, was situated and we just, with my cameraman, uh, walking through uh, all this place and found this uh, uh, beautiful cow and just wanted uh, to uh, ask uh, a couple of questions. <laughs> Good interview then. Yeah, it was, was one of the best interviews in my life. <laughs> okay, the second one. Uh, so is, so is being a night 
It's like, yeah, a childhood oh. dream. <laughs> so more, <laughs> and more seriously, in your opinion, what is worth fighting for? Uh, it's a hard question. I don't know. It just was for fun. <laughs> uh, um, I did this picture in Mukachevo, in the Zakarpathian uh, region, uh, in the uh, castle of, uh, of Palanak, uh, how it, it's called, I don't, I don't know exactly. <laughs> uh, it was just for fun, so because I think uh, that, um, that uh, we have just one life and we have to spend this life uh, as more expressful, as more I interesting as we can. Uh, and it's not uh, that time for wars and so on, just uh, Peace, love, and <laughs> unity. <laughs> okay, and last but not least, uh, what would you say is the most frightening? So the stage fright uh -huh. or jumping? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, one of the best experience moments uh, for last years, even for the whole life. And you know that after this picture, uh, I don't care about anything else. <laughs> but uh, I definitely will... Uh, uh, will repeat this experience, uh, but after the 13th of May, after the grand final <laughs> of Eurovision. <laughs> and speaking about stage fright, how do, you, how do you prepare? Do you have special rituals? Do you have uh, any song that you listen to? Any, any, any tips? Uh, no, I just try to concentrate uh, on uh, what I have to do. Um, because, uh, for, for example, during the Eurovision, there will be dozens of rehearsals on stage, so definitely we'll be prepared uh, for the 100% uh, to go on stage. Uh, so we have just to concentrate, uh, to forget, forget about anything, but uh, uh, just have to concentrate only on uh, what you have to do in, a, in the during, moment uh, during uh, three and a half hours uh, during the final or two hours during the semifinals just think about all the contestants uh, just think about the viewers and uh, have to do the best uh, uh, to express everything is going on uh, mm. in the arena in the contest uh, as well and my last question uh, what would you say about ukraine to the foreigners who plan to come in kiev for your revision just uh, don't believe anything you see on the internet or on television. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> me as a journalist, <laughs> I can say this. Uh, we have really very hospitality people, uh, very peaceful people who really uh, appreciate uh, to meet uh, everyone who will come to the Eurovision Sun Contest. So just book your tickets, <laughs> book your accommodation and come to this uh, to Kiev uh, for two weeks. Uh, it will, it, it's going to be a fantastic time, for sure. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Timur. It was a great pleasure to have you, you. in this interview. It was Timur Miroshnichenko, future host of this year's Eurovision Song Contest, which will take place the 9th, 11th and 13th of May in Kiev. Thank you for watching UATV. Stay tuned for the rest of the programme.